This video lecture will provide a quick review of the radiographic findings of several illnesses and conditions. An x-ray depicting left upper lobe atelectasis may reveal a hazy veil-like opacity over the left lung, effacement of the left upper heart border, and signs of decreased lung volume, such as ipsilateral tracheal deviation and elevation of the left hilum. On an x-ray depicting right lower lobe atelectasis, we might expect to see right lower zone opacification with effacement of the borders between the lung and both the heart and the medial aspect of the right hemidiaphragm, and signs of decreased lung volume, such as ipsilateral tracheal deviation and diaphragmatic tenting. The plain radiographic findings that can occur with congested heart failure include cardiomegaly, Signs of vascular redistribution, such as cephalization and increased artery to bronchus ratio in superior segments. Signs of pulmonary vascular congestion, such as hilar enlargement and a widened vascular pedicle. Signs of pulmonary interstitial edema, such as curly B lines, peribronchial cuffing, and interlobal fissure thickening. Pleural effusions. And in more severe cases, alveolar edema. Hiatal hernia usually presents radiographically as a well-defined, rounded, retrocardic opacity with an air fluid level. In many cases of hiatal hernia, there will not be an air bubble below the left hemidiaphragm. This is a relatively expected finding considering that the stomach is no longer in its usual position. One pitfall to consider is that hiatal hernias can look similar to a retrocardiac lung abscess or another cavitary lesion but it will change in size and shape between radiographs. A lung abscess typically appears as a focal round mass with a central cavity and a gas fluid level. The outer wall of the cavity is poorly defined due to surrounding consolidation, while the inner margin is relatively sharp. Within the cavity is a collection of gas and fluid. A sharp horizontal line divides the dark radiolucency, the gas, from the dense opacity below it, the fluid. While looking at this chest x-ray, the first thing that may come to your attention is the unusual appearance of the cardiac silhouette. It has a large and globular shape which apparently resembles an old-fashioned leather water bottle. Now regardless of any visual similarity, the name is fitting enough since the pericardial sac is filled with fluid. More objectively, however, the cardiothoracic ratio in this image is approximately 0.6, which is larger than normal. On a posterior anterior radiograph, such as this one, the cardiothoracic ratio should be less than 0.5. Now on a bit of a side note, this value is not measured on an anterior posterior radiograph because over-magnification of the heart would give an inaccurate estimation of its size. And finally, inspection of the airway reveals that the lower trachea is not quite vertical and that the carina appears to be displaced to the right. This appearance can occur if the x-ray was performed while the patient was rotated to the right. As well, encroachment of the engorged pericardial sac on the lower airway can also push the carina away from the midline. This is a plain radiograph of an individual with pleural effusions bilaterally. The first abnormality that is readily apparent is the dense homogeneous opacity that is present in the costophrenic angles. Unlike with consolidation, air bronchograms are not present. Because of this dense opacity, the interface between the fluid and the heart border and hemidiaphragm is indistinct. This is known as the silhouette sign. Similarly, the costophrenic angle is completely obliterated due to the presence of pleural fluid. The fluid forms a meniscus with a concave upper border and an ascending lateral tip. The diagnosis of a pleural lipoma cannot be made on the basis of a plain radiograph alone. Nonetheless, there are a few findings that can help suggest the diagnosis. 
On a chest x-ray, it appears as a focal homogeneous opacity with a convex bulge and a sharp border. Also very important is that there is no evidence of bone destruction, such as rib erosion. The radiographic appearance has been likened to a snowball after having made impact with a wall. Note that the edges of the mass are tapered and there is an obtuse angle between the long wall and the contour of the lesion. On an x-ray depicting right middle of pneumonia, we would expect to see right lower zone opacification with air bronchograms and an indistinct right heart border, but with a clearly demarcated right hemidiaphragm. I'll also add that unless there is coinciding atelectasis, there is usually no loss of lung volume. As well, keep in mind that radiographic evidence of pneumonia can worsen during the first few days of treatment and take several weeks to completely resolve. Pneumoperitoneum refers to free gas in the peritoneal cavity, and it appears on an erect chest radiograph as a subdiaphragmatic lucency. The green arrows demarcate the right hemidiaphragm, which appears radiographically as a thin white line. The red arrows demarcate the upper border of the liver, and between the liver and the right hemidiaphragm is a thick crescent of air. Sandwiched between the blue arrows is a portion of gas-filled colon. Adjacent to it is free air under the left hemidiaphragm. Here's a much less conspicuous case of pneumoperitoneum. Notice the thin area of increased blackness between the diaphragm, which has been highlighted in purple, and the liver beneath it. Here the subdiaphragmatic air is highlighted in blue. The plain radiograph of a patient with a pulmonary infarction can be deceivingly normal, without any striking abnormality identifiable. In this x-ray, we can see a sign that is known as Hampton's hump. The wedge-shaped opacity in the periphery of the lung is a rare but suggestive finding of pulmonary infarction. The base is juxtaposed to the pleural surface, while the rounded apex, that is the hump, is angled towards the hilum. With a pneumothorax, a thin sharp white line, the visceral pleura, separates the lung and the free air, which is void of bronchovesicular markings. As well, in the case of a simple thorax, there will not be any signs of mediastinal shift. Now, although most x-rays are taken in the urex position, for the purpose of detecting pneumothorax anyway, this way air collects superiorly and laterally, unfortunately, not all patients can stand. So when the radiograph is taken with the patient in the supine position, air actually collects basally, which may seem counterintuitive, but in that position, the anterior and lateral calciferinic sulci are actually the highest points in which free pleural air can collect. When air collects in this location, it may result in a deep sulcus sign, which is an indirect sign of a pneumothorax. Spine x-rays, however, lack sensitivity for detecting pneumothorax and should not be relied upon if negative. If the patient cannot stand, then a lateral decubitus x-ray should be taken with the affected lung facing upwards. In patients with situs inversus totalis, you would expect to see a right-sided cardiac silhouette, descending aorta, and gastric air bubble, while the left hemidiaphragm will be higher than the right. A skin fold on the chest can result in an abrupt drop-off in opacity, thereby mimicking the radiographic findings of a pneumothorax. A skin fold, however, has a dark band, opposed to a light, at its lateral contour. As well, in the case of skin folds, bronchovesicular markings extend to the periphery of the lung, whereas with a pneumothorax they do not. Keep in mind, however, that apical bronchovesicular markings may be difficult to appreciate. Some of the findings that we may expect to see with a tension pneumothorax include a clearly demarcated visceral pleural edge, free air, a collapsed lung, and contralateral mediastinal shift. It is important to keep in mind that while these findings are suggestive, they can lack specificity. And furthermore, these patients may be hemodynamically compromised, 
without radiographic evidence of a tension pneumothorax. The term boot-shaped heart refers to the abnormal appearance of the cardiac silhouette. Two of the four classic defects that contribute to this appearance are a ventricular septal defect and pulmonic stenosis. This combination of defects results in an elevated right ventricular systolic pressure with ensuing right ventricular hypertrophy, which is a third defect in the classic tetralogy. In this radiograph, right ventricular hypertrophy has resulted in an upturned cardiac apex that is positioned to abnormally high above the diaphragm. Pulmonic stenosis can also result in a small main pulmonary artery due to decreased flow. This finding is depicted on the x-ray as an increased concavity of the main pulmonary artery segment. The fourth defect is an overriding aorta, which along with pulmonic stenosis and a VSD, facilitates the shunting of blood away from the pulmonary system. This results in a large aorta, which in a significant proportion of patients is right-sided, and decreased pulmonary vascularity, allogemia which is visualized on this x-ray as diminished lung markings, that is, increased blackness of the lung fields. The most common chest x-ray finding in a patient with a thoracic aortic aneurysm is mediastinal widening. Calcification of the outer wall can occur, but it is relatively uncommon. Large aneurysms can cause lateral displacement of the trachea and inferior displacement of the left main bronchus. Aneurysms that are limited to the ascending aorta typically cause a right-sided bulge, and when large, can form the upper right border of the heart. And aneurysms that are limited to the descending aorta typically cause a left-sided bulge. In this example, the first abnormality that may come to your attention is the globular or oval-shaped cardiac silhouette. The unusual heart shadow occurs due to prominence of the right atrium and convexity of the left ventricle. In more classic examples, the right atrium protrudes out more laterally and the oval shape of the heart looks like it's tilted sideways. The second abnormal finding is a narrow vascular pedicle. This occurs because the thymic shadow is typically smaller or absent and the pulmonary artery lies directly behind the aorta. On a lateral radiograph, however, this front to back orientation of the aorta and pulmonary artery would result in a wide superior mediastinum. Overcirculation of pulmonary blood flow results in a third finding represented on plain radiography as an increase in vascular lung markings. The combination of an oval cardiac silhouette and a narrow vascular pedicle has been visually described as an egg on a string. Now while the combination of these findings results in a classic appearance, it is important to keep in mind that in many cases the x-ray is completely normal. <laughs>